Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I'm working on a presentation that I'm giving at the Pittsburgh Functional Programming Meetup, which is called Refactoring Refactored with Ramda. Um, I decided, you know, the presentation has a lot of slides. I decided I wanted to do some live coding, and I thought it might be useful to share it online, both for my benefit and for your benefit. If you're watching this, I assume you have some interest in Ramda or functional programming or just JavaScript in general. Maybe you just want to say, you know, see what is this functional programming thing all about? So the very first example I have is a very simple one. Um, it says get views function. Now, get views accepts a bunch of YouTube videos. And the first thing it does is it stores off a results array, which is just a temp that's going to contain our actual results. Um, then we're going to be looping through all of the YouTube videos. And we're going to be asking, uh, does this video have views? Um, maybe for some reason, some of our YouTube videos don't have views and they're not numeric. So, you know, it's just not a key that's given to us. Um, this, you see stuff like this a lot. Um, and if they do, we're just going to push those views onto our results array and we're going to return it. So an example usage of this might be, uh, here's one right here. So we have YouTube videos. Uh, a couple of them just don't have the views key. A couple of them do. And then the actual result should just be the views. Um, I see code like this in my, in my short JavaScript career. I've seen code like this so much. It's everywhere. Um, I think Ramda has a lot to offer code like this. So without more chit chat, let's get started. I'm just gonna run my tests to make sure that I'm not doing anything sneaky here. Okay, my tests all pass. It's really important as you're refactoring to have tests to make sure you haven't taken a misstep or broken something. So to start out, I'm first gonna like tease out a couple of things that are happening here. You'll notice this loop is doing multiple things, right? It's saying, I kinda wanna select only certain YouTube videos where the criteria is that they have the views key. And then it's doing this actual transformation, which is I wanna transform a YouTube video just into the number of views that it has. So to start, you might notice this outer pattern is kind of um, like what they call filter in functional programming. So I'm gonna start, and I'm not even gonna use um, Ramda at all yet, but I'm gonna start by filtering the YouTube videos down um, using the built-in JavaScript filter function. So I have a video and a video, I, I care about the video if it has views in video. So this is just saying, transform YouTube videos such that I only wanna select out YouTube videos that have the views key. Um, so that's good, if we've done that, we can kinda of delete that if right there, which is nice. And if I run this, uh, I broke something because I can't spell the word filter. There we go, that should be good. So if I run that, what do we get? We still are successful, so that's good. Um, the next pattern you might notice here is this kind of transformation pattern. For each video, we wanna transform that video into a view, um, or the count of views, rather. So that pattern in functional programming, we call map. Um, so we're gonna map a video such that all we're doing is we're taking the video's views. Um, video views. Um, you may notice now that we're not talking about this results thing at all. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to return YouTube videos. I think this is safe. I don't think that this points back to the original YouTube videos. It's just our local reference. So I run that. What do we get back? We get back a success. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this fluent. Um, I know in refactoring, a lot of things have names, especially if you've read like Martin Fowler's refactoring book, but I'm not really gonna, I'm gonna be a little sloppy about names just for the sake of, uh, you know, keeping it fluent. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna make these fluent. Hmm, I said fluent twice, interesting. <laughs> um, so we're gonna filter and then we're gonna map. I think that cleans it up a little bit. We have to make sure it's important to return here now. So let's do that. Subject is not a function. Uh, so I'm having an interesting error, which I see is because there's a semicolon here. There shouldn't be a semicolon here. We're calling dot filter and then we're calling dot map. So we transformed that kind of uh, tightly bound stateful loop 
into a transformation pipeline. We're first filtering and then we're mapping. Great, and we still pass, that's good. Um, so now I'm gonna do something interesting. I'm gonna bring in Ramda. Um, it's customary to require Ramda as big R. So I've got Ramda. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make this pipeline a little bit more explicit. So I'm gonna return r.pipe. Um, and I'm gonna do these two things inside of the pipe, but instead of using the built-in filter and map, I'm gonna use r's filter and map because they have the sweet property where they accept the function as the first argument, and then they can accept some other value to operate over as the second argument. Um, so the last thing that I actually have to do here is I have to pass down YouTube videos to the pipe. So let's run this, this should be good. So this is exactly like what we had before. The difference is instead of using the built-in object or array methods rather, we are going to be using Ramda methods. So first we're gonna filter out videos that have views, then we're gonna pluck those views out. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just use a couple of little really nice Ramda convenience methods inside of here. Um, I know this happens to be the same as r.has, which will just uh, return a new function, which knows how to check if the given thing that's passed to it has, the given object has the key that you give it. So this should be exactly the same. And then I'm gonna do r.prop views, where prop returns a new function that just knows how to do dot views in this case. So if I run this, I should still be green, and I am, wonderful. Um, Ramda encourages what's called a point-free style, which uh, means that you don't have to talk about data as much as you normally would um, otherwise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now make this point-free by plucking it out. Um, you'll notice that YouTube videos is on the end. Um, because it's on the end and it's our only input to the function, I'm allowed to pluck it out and just not even talk about it anymore. And then my function just becomes a constant value that's defined in terms of pipe. So that's that. Um, that's how you might refactor this using Ramda. Um, again, pipe makes a new function, which is kind of like the composition of the other two functions. Um, so, the compose operator is the an alternative to pipe, but it just the only difference is that it takes things in the opposite order. So if I wanted to use compose, I would do it in this order, and that worked. Um, if you are familiar with compose in the math sense, you'll understand what this means. If not, I would think of it as the after apply after, or pipe right would be a good name for it. Um, where we're going to filter, and then after that, we're going to do a map. Um, anyways, uh, this is the first example with ref of refactoring refactored with Ramda. Let me know if you have any questions.